All right, welcome back. This is M Dog. Today we're taking a look at the Lord of the Rings Online. So I kind of want to um, take advantage of the mood I've been in lately, which is basically just to enjoy uh, a lot of current and even more so older MMOs. Uh, I play a lot of uh, simulation games, especially a fishing game called Russian Fishing 4. Uh, you may not be familiar with that unless you are a regular visitor of my channel. Uh, if you are a visitor of my channel or you know me from from Twitch, I do spend a lot of time playing RF4 and um, other simulation games. But my real true passion in terms of like what I've spent the most time playing over the last decade or more um, has been uh, MMORPGs. So um, one of my favorites of, has always been Lord of the Rings Online. And I, and I know it must not be for everyone because when I, um, you know, play with some of the, my friends online that I play other MMOs with, uh, not all of them feel the same way about Lord of the Rings Online that I do. So though I can't tell you the exact reasons, I, I do recognize that, uh, that Lotro is not for everyone. Um, but that being said, this is one of the MMOs that I always come back to. And other than... Uh, you know, a season of time where I just had a, a lot of time in World of Warcraft, another season of time that I had a lot of time in SWOTOR. Um, this is, Slotro's got to be my most played MMO other than those two. And I would say it may be more than SWOTOR. It's going to be close. I've got a lot of time. There's been just a lot of um, <clears throat> really good memories playing this game. Uh, but today I want to talk about skirmishes. So uh, this will be part one of skirmishes. It's possible that I will do a part two about skirmishes down the line because I'm really just get, getting back into Lotro. I've, I've had a long break. Uh, but as, as I have been in a mood to play a lot of different MMOs, Lotro is one of the ones I've played. So I actually started on a new server. Uh, one thing I do enjoy doing when I'm checking out an MMO I haven't played in a long time is to go back to square one. So fresh start, have just played a couple tunes on the server. This is the one I've gotten the farthest, um, playing this champion, which was my sort of first, um, first love in terms of different classes in this game. Overall, I would say my favorite class is probably the lore master, uh, but there's four or five classes in Lotro that I just love. Anyway, felt like playing a melee class. So we're playing a champion um, here on the Arkenstone server. And let's take a look at skirmishes. I think skirmishes, uh, since the day that they released in Lotro, they weren't obviously in the base game. I believe if I remember correctly, they came out in Moria. I, I should have looked this up. Um, but since they came out, they've always been one of my favorite parts of the game. So I thought we'd run a couple skirmishes here. If you're not used to my channel, by the way, I don't edit. I don't, <laughs> you know, these are longer form videos that I do typically 20, 30 minutes, sometimes even longer. Um, and frankly, that's just a time thing for me. So I apologize if you're expecting a uh, snappy video here, you may be disappointed. This is Skirmishes though, part one of potentially multi-part series. We'll see, I'll come back to it. I think I never finished this thought. What, what I was gonna say is I would like to do this for different MMOs. I'm actually playing quite a few right now. Uh, just sampling different ones. Lotro is probably the one I'm playing the most of at the moment, but that can change at any time. Um, and to me, if I'm trying to make videos about MMOs, uh, just to, just doing less play series, although it sounds like a good idea, it's just not for me. I mean, it takes so long, right? And it's so easy to lose steam. So it's better for me to try to focus on like uh, very partitioned aspects of the game. And Lotro has, you know, opportunities to do that especially with things like skirmishes. So let's look at the um, skirmish trainer and skirmish captain. Um, if you don't know, skirmishes are things you can do solo or with multiple players and they're instanced uh, either attack or defend, kind of like dungeons that you run. One of the cool things is that you have a companion, an uh, NPC, um, an AI controlled companion that runs with you. And so you're not only uh, leveling yourself and choosing skills and such for yourself, both in general and in the context of skirmishes, but you're also uh, making choices about which companion you want, what they look like, what type of abilities they have, and all of those sorts of things. So this is gonna be a very brief introduction to what you can do in skirmishes. Uh, mostly my goal here in this first video is just to run one or two skirmishes so that you can see what they look like in action. 
Uh, I'm trying to make sure I'm not covering up things. As soon as we start the skirmish here, uh, actually, let me go ahead and do this now. Uh, no reason, no reason to look at me. All right, so as you can see, the skill trainer, um, let's, instead of looking at the ones we've uh, leveled, let's look at all of them. So these are all of the different roles you can have, again, looking specifically at your companion. So you can have herbalist, which mainly does healing, although a little bit of buffing as well. Banner guard, which is sort of like a, um, you know, I can't remember. It's been so long since I've used, I think they can tank a little bit, but mostly it's like a buffing situation. It's not just buffing though. I'm trying to remember on, it's, it's, it's a support type companion of some sort. I haven't used banner guard very much at all. Protector, definitely tank. Sage, uh, remind me, huh, wink, wink to come back to Sage because Sage is, is important to talk about, but that is a buffing type um, class. Actually, it's a it's like a mage, so it can be run as a DPS. The value of Sage tends to be in, in its buff for you and your party, though. Uh, Archer, just obviously DPS. Warrior uh, can do some tanking, but tends to be a little more DPS focused comparing that to Protector. Um, but back to Sage, first of all, the easy choice, and the one that I'm using right now, if you don't really know what type of companion you want is Herbalist, because if nothing else, Getting those heals in the midst of fights is really nice. Me playing a champion class, I'm pretty focused on area of effect uh, damage, so damaging multiple enemies at the same time. And so I'm taking a lot of hits. I've got the attention of most enemies, and it's nice to be able to have those heals coming in. Uh, the other one that is can be a good choice, though, is Sage, especially as you get to higher levels and you're running higher and higher leveled skirmishes because of the way it... Um, it levels up. I don't think your companions get as powerful at higher levels. Uh, they become less and less valuable in skirmishes, is at least my understanding. Again, I'm new to Lotro, um, you know, uh, in terms of playing it recently, so I'm, I'm fairly out of touch with some aspects, but that's what I've heard. And so the buffs you get from Sage do tend to benefit you even at late game, unlike the amount of DPS or healing or, you know, tanking ability that you might see in others. So if you're just looking for an easy choice on this, I would say Herbalist for a lot of the leveling process. But if you are at end game, it may be Sage that you want to look at. All right, so let's go back to the skills we've earned. So right now our Herbalist is level 43. I'm level 44. So worth dropping some points. Just wanted to briefly talk about the currency we're using here. These are marks. That's how we're going to level these, these guys up, level skills up, all kinds of stuff you can use these marks on. Um, and we have over 2,000 marks right now just from running skirmishes and some other uh, rewards for deeds and stuff. But um, worth leveling those. So we just put some points in there. Now it's currently level 5, so my companion actually one level above me. Now let's look at skills. Um, let's look at the ones that we have trained. Here, here's the list of all skills. You can, and as you get higher level, there's more options. I believe that's how it works. So for herbalist, we are currently running refresh, refreshing herbs, which does give us heals, and then strengthening drought, which is going to give us uh, a buff. Because again, I think buffs are really helpful in skirmishes. Because really, I mean, you're still the main star of the show in terms of uh, the damage and everything that's happening in these skirmishes. So. This is currently at level 43, so let's level that up by one. Let's level that up by one. Still plenty of marks, obviously. All right, training. Huge list of training. Let's just look at the ones we've trained to make this easier. Uh, it is currently at 43, so same thing. We're going to put a point into each, each of these. These actually, oop, I did that twice. doesn't really matter. These are the ones that are actually going to affect us. These don't affect skills, affect your herbalist or whatever uh, role you have. Skills are going to affect those guys. Training is something you can put on yourself. And then, is that right? No, 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 no. I think that's wrong. See, it's been too long. I think training actually does affect your the role you've done. Personal is what affects you. I believe that's the way it works. So we've been using Battlemaster for our um, our champion. Yeah, I'm almost certain about that. Training, skills, go with your role. Personal is actually for you, which makes sense since it's called personal. Now let's go over to our skirmish captain. Now that we've looked at the different skills and stuff, and you can always go over here to go to manage your traits and um, the equipped attributes, basically these end up mostly being cosmetic options. You can spend marks to make different cosmetic options. Like if you want your guy to have a full beard, if you want him to be a certain race, like a dwarf or whatever, if you want, you know, there's different things you can do to make your companion look different just cosmetically. 
Uh, skills, as you get higher level, you can do more and more skills. Right now, we still only have two, so those are our two skills that are equipped. Training, we can, I don't even use light armor. Um, so we could technically get another training thing leveled up and put that, oh, but our, our, our herbalist does. So we can do that. Um, and then personal, like I said before, is what helps you. And again, as we get higher level, we'll unlock more of these slots. So let's go ahead and confirm that. I really don't know that we want light armor training as our, as our third one. So I'm not going to go level that up because I'm not even sure if that's what I would really want. I'd have to look at what the different options are. Um, I should have mentioned, by the way, right now we are in Angmar. Uh, over here at the main city area when you first get to Angmar. And we are at a skirmish camp. These skirmish camps are, are, are spread throughout different areas. Um, but I think it's worth pointing out before we jump into a skirmish that you can basically get almost anything in the game from trading these marks. So if for whatever reason you haven't gotten, um, you know, some jewelry or cloaks or whatever for your level, uh, so we're level 44 right now. So we go to level 43 gear here and we could use marks that we get in the skirmish to get a, I don't know, a necklace. And this necklace wouldn't be good for us based on what the stats it has on it. But like I said, if you hadn't gotten one, you can catch up with your gear. Um, same thing with uh, armor. You can get legendary item stuff, which I don't need at this point because I'm not to that point in the game where you start working on legendary stuff. Which, by the way, new expansion this year in Lotro. And the long talked about complete revamp of the legendary the LI system. I'm very much excited to see what they do with that. And I definitely think it's a long time coming to get that done. Uh, as I mentioned, you can get all kinds of cosmetics. I mean, there's going to be pages and pages of cosmetics you can buy with marks. Um, what else is there? Mithril stuff, which is always cool. Currency exchange. There's different currencies. Uh, you can use marks to exchange for more medallions, uh, medallions to seals. As you get higher level, that will become necessary. It's really not important right now. I think Curiosities is the one that I really wanted to point out, though. So if you look at my inventory right now, we're going to have certain items like this uh, Corroded Neeker Breaker Horn. It is a trophy sought by captains, hunters, runekeepers, and Bjornings. Okay, So there's going to be a point in the base game of Lotro that you're going to need, based on your class, to collect a certain amount of these trophies. And one of the really cool things about... Um, skirmishes in my opinion is that these types of things can be purchased with skirmish marks so uh, some of the basic trophies are pretty easy to farm based on what class you are um, but the sort of next level like the major class items these can be some of them uh, a major pain to get so the fact that you can come get these with marks I just love I love that there is for people like me that really enjoy skirmishes there are ways in which all of the time you invest earning these marks and doing skirmishes you, it pays off in either shortcuts or even just ways to replace things that you would need to do uh, in other parts of the game so I, I like that I wish that they would do even more with that but um, it's already a lot, but there's crafting stuff. So anyway, lots of stuff you can do with these skirmishes marks. And, and again, I could go on and on about skirmishes. I, I, that's why I'm saying this is a part one video because I, 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 I maintain the right to, uh, to choose to do another video about skirmishes, mostly just because that's what I enjoy. One of the things I enjoy doing most, especially as a solo player. Um, I have been able to get in some groups lately and run some dungeons. That has been fantastic. But... That has not always been my experience in Lotro. Sometimes I do tend to play a lot of solo uh, content in Lotro. And so skirmish is a way to do that. Still feel like you're having some pretty cool experiences um, if you're not in the mood to get in a group or you just don't have a group at the moment to play with. All right, we're gonna do uh, one defensive and then potentially we'll do an offensive skirmish as well. Let's start with an offensive. Um, Let's do Attack at Dawn. I like Attack at Dawn uh, quite a bit. Um, let's see. So it's, oh, there, there's where it is. All right, let's cancel that. This is one thing I was thinking. I haven't done this, but I was thinking about launching it as a level 45, one level above us. 
Um, now, what does it say? Mark's at 104%. So we get 104% versus, if we're at 44%, are we just getting 100? If level 44 was getting 100? Yeah, so one level up is only gonna give me 4% more marks. I don't think that's worth it. So we're just gonna do this. Okay, so again, this is an offensive skirmish. The main difference in offensive and defensive skirmishes is in offensive skirmishes, I feel like you are setting the pace because you're moving forward to the next objective. In defensive skirmishes, there can be some waiting around or even moments of feeling pressure because you are um, waiting for the, uh, uh, the enemies to come to you, you're defending. All right, let's travel now. Let's go check out Attack at Dawn. All right, I like Attack at Dawn. It's pretty pretty quick, pretty snappy, and uh, has its sort of own feel to it. So here we go. We're going to summon our Crusader. Now, if I had a tanking um, companion here, um, this is Herb, by the way. He's an herbalist, and his name is Herb. If I had an attacking one, then I might use this ability here to direct him to go engage one of the enemies so that he could do his job and tank the enemy. Or even if he was DPS, I might want to distract one or two enemies with him. Since he's a healer though, I just want him to hang back and I'm gonna try to keep as much aggro as I can. All right, so now we're gonna start in with our abilities. Like I said, we are running a yellow line champion here. And so we have some pretty good uh, damage, especially when it's multiple enemies. Although I feel like the damage is still respectable even in situations like this where we only have the one opponent. Um, so we blasted through that pretty well. So basically we just came through the gate and then what this is what you're going to see is you're going to be taking these control points as you clear out enemies and then sometimes the control points will also have a second phase where you have to defend it. So now we can either go to the eastern or the western gate to press forward. We will go left. And we easily got that guy. Let's go ahead and pull, make sure we get maintain this one too. With Herb over there doing some healing, if I don't build up some enmity or some, uh, if I don't taunt some of these enemies, they will eventually peel off and go towards the healer, which as much as possible, we don't really want that. So this is a lieutenant. I guess I should mention the lieutenants. There are tons of different um, lieutenants that are possible that you'll run into in skirmishes. And the cool thing is, especially if you're playing at higher difficulty, higher level, higher difficulty, you really have to pay attention to the mechanics of some of those lieutenants. Uh, at this difficulty level, we will probably just be able to push and power right through most of these guys. But there's some, uh, some lieutenants that maybe you want to kill their ad all the ads first. Um, uh, but then other ones, you want to kill the lieutenant first because of how they're buffing or whatever. All right, so we continue to push forward. We are definitely going at a good pace here. I think our just our, our gear and our abilities, everything's at a pretty good spot right now in terms of the amount of damage we're doing. So they are shooting stuff from up above, and uh, if we're not careful, if we stay in the squares too long, we'll take some... A little bit of damage from that. So far, no encounters. All right, there's a counterattack. No encounters, though, E-N-C-O-U-N-T-E-R, um, which there will eventually be an encounter or two in this run, and we'll try to take a look at those. Basically, an account encounter is just when a special boss appears, and each, each skirmish map has, I don't know, typically quite a few different encounters that can spawn. There's one here. Tharb has arrived to retake the Eastern Gate. Uh, so let me think about this. Eastern, that would be west, that would be east. So that is this gate. Okay, so we have a group that's coming to retake this eastern gate. This isn't the encounter. I'm pretty sure the encounter will be down below, but we'll see. The good news is I'm not sure if I've had this encounter on this character, so we might get uh, progress in, in our deed. All right, let's see if I see him down here. Oh, maybe he is over there. Just to be thorough, we're gonna go take the Western Gate as well. Is that the Western Gate? Or am I completely, oh no, that's Eastern Gate, okay. So that's why we didn't see him, he's actually over here. Let's go ahead and pull in whoever wants to come. Oh, don't start hitting, don't start hitting my healer, please. 
So there's Tharb down there. I don't know if you can see him, but that is actually the encounter. So we would like to be able to pull this, uh, this rook here. Oh, nope, that pulled Tharb as well. Oh, well. We'll have to fight them both. We should be able to kill the... Um, let's go ahead and pop some cooldowns here so we can make sure we get this without too much sustained damage. Yeah, I think we'll be fine here. Let's pull him out of that red stuff. All right, so that's the end of the encounter. So that, again, the encounters won't be the same every time. So the next time I run this, that same encounter likely will not, will not pop. So we'd have a different encounter or a couple of a different encounters. So by getting both gates before we press forward, it also means there'll be less reinforcements at the end of this, I believe is how that works. And we did get a medallion. I think that was specifically from the encounter. This is something we can throw down on the ground that will buff us or debuff the enemy in some way. There's different ones that are available to loot while you're going. I should mention, you don't get loot uh, other than some things you can turn in for a little bit of silver. Uh, you don't really get a lot of loot in the skirmishes. The point of the skirmishes is more to acquire the marks. And if you notice, Herb took a lot of damage there. Those two archers were focused on him just for a minute. He took a lot of damage. So it's pretty important that I keep the, uh, the aggro on me and not my companion. Yeah, but anyway, it's it's the it's really those marks, and then you'll get a little bit of silver. So this gets traded into for 11.5 silver. Not a ton, but if you do a few skirmishes, it does kind of add up. So let's loot that. Now we've got two of them, so about 23.18 silver. It's also worth mentioning, one of my favorite parts of um, running skirmishes is that all of these deeds that you have out in the world for killing a certain amount of enemies, enemy types in a certain area, you actually get to um, advance them in the skirmish. So wherever the skirmish takes place, the game treats it as if you were out in that area defeating enemies. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I enjoy doing skirmishes like if I'm working on, you know, orcs in the North Downs or whatever. I would much rather run a skirmish that meets that qualification than just going out in the landscape and searching for that enemy type over and over. Uh, it depends on how quickly you're wanting to do it. There obviously are more or faster ways. Oh, we're, we're stunned. Okay, here we go. I was like, we're stunned and Herb has a lot of the, the enemy's attention right now. All right, let's see if we can get this archer back on us. Yeah, he is on us. Oops, wrong button. So I have a lot of fun running skirmishes, and the fact that I'm finishing deeds without even thinking about it is just a bonus. So now we just have to destroy the catapults, claim the uh, flag over here, and then we're actually going in for the last last encounter of the uh, of the skirmish uh, of this skirmish. So here's the uh, one of the cool things is that different skirmishes do have different. Um, Oh, here's a counterattack. Cool. I wasn't expecting a counterattack. Okay. Let's get a good uh, AoE attack here before they start running towards Herb. Oh, one of them made it. So I do have an ability that forces one enemy to taunt on me. So we were able to keep this guy off of, off of Herb, even though he did run back there. Herb didn't like the way he smelled. He was standing a little too close. So this last part of Attack at Dawn for the skirmish, we have to defeat Grog, which you can see him right there, um, and secure the knowledge of Esteldon's location, which that's another cool thing worth mentioning. There's, there's some lore behind different uh, skirmishes. Uh, a lot of times they reflect like key moments from uh, the Lord of the Rings books or just key moments of what's going on as you're playing out through the uh, book quest, the main story quest in Lord of the Rings Online. 
do not allow a goblin, a goblin scout to escape. So again, if we were playing on a higher difficulty or if we had multiple players, somebody would have to be on goblin duty. I don't think we'll have to. I think we will actually be able to kill the boss before the goblin even has a chance of escaping. But let's test that theory. This is enlightenment. So I'll throw this down. It may not actually matter too much. All right, we're going to pop some cooldowns here. Get some good damage in. All right, so you see the scout over to the left? That's actually the guy who's trying to escape. So if we don't get some DPS going here pretty quick, yeah, I'm a little worried about it. I think we would get it, but I'm not sure. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill this guy and not play with uh, play with the possibility that he would escape. And uh, the boss did do a lot of damage to us. So Herb did not keep keep up in heals there. Uh, but we did, we did win. We're gonna try to stay out of the fire. Fire's gone. And now we click on the flag. Now, worth noting something. Kind of notice where we are in our XP bar. XP bar is down here at the bottom. We are almost level 45. Clearly, we'll hit level 45 when we turn when we finish the skirmish. But if you've played from the very beginning of the game like I have, you will remember that there was a time when skirmishes were insane amounts of XP. Uh, and it is a little bit hard. I'm a little spoiled because I remember those days. And so when you turn in a skirmish now and, and the combat you do while you're in there, you get a little bit of XP. It's still fine. Like if you run a few ex uh, skirmishes, you're going to probably end up with a level, like one level or so. But it's not like it used to be. So let's see what happens here. So we barely go into 45 there. So again, a little bit of XP. It helps. It gets you over the hump. But um, it's, again, not quite the crazy xp that we used to get oh a new skirmish is available survival barrow downs i think that one's a pretty hard one i don't remember i haven't run that one in forever all right the rangers of esteldon will remember your service crusade and without your aid esteldon would surely have fallen all right and then you travel and then that's it the skirmish is over again it's not as fun as running a dungeon in the sense of like, you know, hanging out with your buds and in a party with real people and different boss mechanics and all that. But to be able to just do it solo takes 10, 15 minutes at max to run a skirmish usually. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. One of the really cool systems, and there are a lot. I mean, Lord of the Rings, if nothing else, has a lot of systems in it. And I really like this system, by the way. If we want to look a little better, I mean, we do have a lot of cosmetic gear from playing all over the over, over all the years. Uh, but I do like I do like having on the equipment that I'm actually wearing as crazy and sometimes awful as it looks. I enjoy that that uh, part of the game where you get um, you get new piece of gear and then you see what it looks like. So. Until I get to pretty high level, I tend to not even wear cosmetics very much. But if you look at my uh, cosmetic cabinet or my uh, storage vault for cosmetics, I, I do have a lot. How may I help you? Okay, so we're gonna repair all. And the one thing I was gonna show you is when you finish the skirmish, you then go in here and sell these, um, these things that we, I was picking up as, as loot from there. So you sell them for silver. That's that you have to exchange it four silver so we ended up with whatever 70 something silver from that run um not bad uh it, it adds up it's it's not going to be your best money maker but it, it certainly adds up um okay so let's run one defensive skirmish I, let's see what this is by the way so this is champion training this is related to my class it's in red so we're we're eligible for it but it's not going to be very easy we're five levels below the recommended level so um, we'll check that out. What's the first step in that? Talking to somebody in North Downs. Um, I may check that out, uh, not during this video, but I, because the first step sometimes is just like, you know, starting something that's going to be tracked. And it's level 50, so that might have to do with our, like, minor class items. I just don't remember. It's been so long. But anyway, you know, since I already warned you we have long videos, let's go ahead and do a defensive one. Uh, let's do a Defense of the Prancing Pony, classic defensive skirmish. All of these are good, by the way. Of these, Siege of Brunin is pro uh, Brunin? Brunin? I wonder how you say that. That's probably my favorite one. Um, sh so should we do our favorite one or do we Defense of the Prancing Pony? Eh, it's hard to say. We'll do Defense of the Prancing Pony. This is, it's interesting, Defensing... 
uh, Defense of the Prancing Pony is an interesting skirmish because it's not one that you unlock when you first unlock skirmishes, which I believe is either level 20 or 25, something like that. Maybe we can look and see what level they are. When do you unlock Thievery and Mischief? Oh, I can't see from here. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, okay. Trouble and Tuck Bros, minimum level 20. So that probably means you unlock it at 20. But the cool thing is you may not unlock Defense of the Prancing Pony when you first unlock Skirmishes, but this is the skirmish that you run during the skirmish tutorial. So you will have seen this if you've ever started skirmishes before because um, the second tutorial skirmish is actually here. So the thing in the Defense of the Prancing Pony is we are literally defending this building, the Prancing Pony, right? Famous inn from Middle Earth here in Bree Town. Uh, and the only thing we're going to do is attack, I mean, sorry, defend enemies that will either be coming from our left or our right. I think in towards the end they actually come from the middle. And then the only other thing we have to worry about is occasionally there will be a torchbearer. And we don't want to let the torchbearer reach the Prancing Pony or bad things happen. Honestly, I don't remember what happens because I don't ever let them reach. But anyway, something bad happens. I think... I think if you let if you let it happen too many times, maybe worse and worse things happen. But anyway, here's a here's a torchbearer. Again, at this difficulty as a solo player, it's just you know pretty much a cakewalk to take care of the torchbearers and stay on the duty of protecting uh, Heathstraw here. Another failing uh, a scenario in which you can fail this this um, skirmish is if. Heath Straw somehow dies. All right, so we've got more attackers, and one of them is a Blood Arrow, Venomous Blood Arrow, who's one of the lieutenants. Again, pretty nice chill. I mean, these defensive ones can get a little more stressful, I guess, but for the most part, a pretty chill uh, game mode where you're still progressing your character in a lot of different ways. Um, but it's just like bite-sized content, and I, I really enjoy it. Another torch bear. I guess at some point I should, um... I should at least show you like the build I'm running here. I'm not going to go deep into detail on it. Uh, maybe I can do another video where I talk about the build I'm running. We do have points available, so I could spin those. But Okay, so this Deathmonger, I think this is a good example of the lieutenant that you want to kill first. Because I think if you leave him up and you kill the adds first, I think he's the one that either raises them from the dead or maybe raises a spirit in place of them. All right, so there's the first assault. We're gonna go through three assaults. That's the first one. Still no event. Uh, at some point soon we'll have an event. All right, I do have a point. Let me think if I know where I wanna put this point. I think here. Is that right? I might need to think about it. But anyway, this is the build I'm running. These are the virtue traits I'm running. I really don't have options yet on race traits. Um, yellow line, AOE, but still a good enough single target DPS. If you're ever really wanting to focus on single target DPS, it is thankfully one of the things I like in Lotro. There is just no penalty to, uh, to switching to a different build. In fact, I encourage you to do that. Uh, if you, if, especially if you're playing a class where you enjoy multiple builds. So for example, if I switch to red, I think it'll let me do it here. Yep. I switched to red. I actually have three available points, so I haven't been keeping it up to task as much as I could have. But now I'm suddenly in my red build. I already know what abilities I've got here because I've been running this build some as well. Although I primarily use yellow, I will sometimes switch to red. And one reason why you want to do that is because you actually get a... Um, you're actually working on deeds for using all of your abilities. And some of your abilities, of course, are locked behind. Boy, am I, this is so much slower right now. I don't have all my points in. 
my uh, my yellow line is just humming. My uh, oop, there's the enemies. My red line, I just need to get it up to date and it'll be stronger. But yellow line is really good. I mean, I think yellow line, especially single target, but even just using it in general is great. Um, but I love the AOE. I, I've all you know, if you can do some really strong AOE damage uh, in an MMO, like to me, that's always just been so fun. And it is also fun here in Lotro. Alright, where's the torch bear? He's coming. Mm, he must be on the other side. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these guys. Do some damage, but we need to keep an eye on where that torch bearer is. There he comes. Alright, so we're gonna peel off here. Make sure we kill him. Everybody should be uh, have enough attention on us that they're not going to um They're not gonna suddenly be on someone else. Ooh. The southwest. Alright, so we can take this guy real quick. Oh my goodness. Wait, two encounters just popped at the same time? Is that what happened? I think that's what just happened. That's kind of interesting. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that before. We just finished two encounters at the same time. Torchbearer is also coming from this way, so we'll just wait for him to catch up to us, and then we'll take him out with some nice AOE abilities. Oh, he didn't make it very far. Poor guy. Alright, let's loot everything we've gotten. Feels like the second... Oh, this is the third assault? So maybe this, the second assault, assault ended... And while I was fighting the encounters, that was the break between the second and third assault. Yeah, we're just rolling right through the third assault now, so this thing's almost over. I don't think I would go as far as to say, like, skirmishes are one of the main reasons <coughs> that I enjoy Lotro. Because I enjoy, there's a lot of aspects that I really enjoy and that when I think about playing, gets me excited about playing. And a lot of it's like the, how much I enjoy the classes. There's still enough complexity to the classes in a world in which so many MMOs have simplified classes and uh, you know cookie cutter approaches and all that. There's a lot of variance and um, complication still in this game. So th there's a lot of reasons why I really enjoy Lotro. But once I'm playing it, I always remember and am surprised by just how much I get into skirmishes again. They are, uh, in my opinion, just terrific. That is close enough, Torchbearer. All right, so that's the third assault. So now we just fight the last guy, right? I think the last guy, and then we are done with this. Do we have some emblems? Yeah, so we'll throw down Burning and the Free Peoples. This is going to give a penalty. It's a debuff for the enemies. And this is damage over time for the enemies. Alright, so here we go. We'll pop this down. Here is the quote-unquote final boss of this skirmish. And there is a cooldown on these emblems. So, like, if he had lasted longer, we could have doubled him up on these debuffs. But he died too quick. And um, they do disappear when you finish the skirmish. So you might as well use those emblems uh, that'll be in your inventory on either, if things get a little hairy, use them then or on the last boss. Okay, so watch the XP bar. Notice that we probably got, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know how to much to say. We probably got a full, like, what would that be? A fifth of the bar, just killing things in this skirmish. And then Oh, maybe we already got the chunk of, of experience at the end. Because all he's offering us now is the travel. So maybe that's where we got that. I, I don't know. It looks like we're traveling now. So no more XP for us. 
So again, it's no longer the source of XP that it used to be. If you, if you want to collect marks and you just enjoy skirmishes, you will at, you know, like here, here I am at level 45. So sort of late base game level wise, right? Uh, pushing up towards Moria at this point, it looks like it probably takes me three to four skirmishes based on which ones I run to hit one level. So that's not terrible. It's not the fastest way to level. Obviously doing, you know, lots of quests uh, or the main story quests sometimes based on which part you're on can be even faster. But, uh, but it is another cool aspect of the game and a part of Lotro that I just really enjoy. I wish other MMOs had systems that had this much depth and complexity and wow. this many options. Um, you know, I will unlock skirmishes for many levels to go, right? But even at level 45, I already have 10 of them. Yeah, 10 of them that I can run. So I think it's pretty cool. So for me, skirmishes, one of the many reasons why I think Lotro is worth checking out even here in 2021. Let me know if you agree, if you still play Lord of the Rings Online uh, and uh, what you think about it. Again, it's not for everyone, um, but I don't know, at least in my mind, I've never felt like Lotro gets as much love as maybe it could. Uh, and I don't know why that is. Some of it, I think right now is just not, you know, not the marketing. It's just not in front of people, uh, as much as some of the other MMOs are, but, um, especially if you enjoy Lord of the Rings, Middle Earth, uh, the story, you know, of Lord of the Rings, not just specifically the story of the ring bearer, but just all of the different lore that goes into it. There's so much rich lore in this game and really decent writing for much of the questing. Unfortunately, I don't always think of story as like one of the strong points of Lotro only because of the way the story is delivered. Um, honestly, it's sometimes delivered in half-baked cutscenes that just aren't as good as they could be. A lot of times, it's just a ton of reading, you know, questing in Lord of the Rings Online does tend to be a ton of reading. I'm currently on Epic Volume 1, Book 7, The Hidden Hope. Uh, and if, if, you, if you go and talk to people and really read the quest dialogue, it's well written. It's good. But it's not delivered in a compelling way like something like Final Fantasy XIV or Star Wars The Old Republic, where in, to me, those, those MMOs, the story is a reason that you think of, of, of why you might want to play those MMOs. And again, it's not because the stories are necessarily better than the story in Lord of the Rings Online. In fact, I would argue the opposite of that, but they sure are delivered better. They are delivered in a compelling way. And especially to me, Star Wars The Old Republic has really decent class stories that, um, you know, that are, that are interesting and, and well done and voice acted and all that sort of delivery is there. But this isn't about SWOTOR, this is about Lotro, and I do think Lotro is worth playing, and Skirmish is one of the many reasons why I, why I would argue that. Hope you've enjoyed this video, let me know if you uh, have, and um, yeah, hopefully I will uh, continue this. I feel like this is a, an idea that I could maybe can come back to every once in a while, not just about Lotro, but other MMOs that I'm sort of dipping my toes into and saying like, hey, for me, this is a part of this, this game that I really like, do you like it as well? I will see you next time. Peace out.